Welcome to another RC Air tutorial. Today is a Builder's Basics. We're going to discuss servo arms. Servo arms come in all shapes and sizes, all different kinds of materials. When you have your small 7 gram servos and stuff, these little plastic arms are absolutely adequate. They will work fine. They're plenty strong. The servo is not going to break. You're not putting enough pressure on them to worry about. When you go to the mini servos, um, a lot of times you can have your plastic arm and then all you do is just add a little bit of carbon fiber to the top of it and then you can have an extended arm and they're going to work fine. So you can see this has just got a plastic arm, it's been glued, uh, running a set screw through there, uh, the spine itself, or spline itself will just go on, you screw it down and you're good. When you get into some of your larger and standard size servos, you're going to find that uh, this is a common arm that comes with your high-tech servos. This is three quarters of an inch. This is a good arm for your throttle maybe. Outside of that, for a standard size servo, this becomes a little bit too short. So these servo arms are kind of interesting. You can go to the hobby shop and you can buy them in like a 10 pack or something like that. Uh, they're made by Dubro. So you have your standard on this side and your heavy duty on this side. And you can see uh, they're quite a bit thicker on the heavy duty. This is what my experience is with these arms. Whether you're using a standard or a heavy duty, the spline system is exactly the same. Okay, it's the same height, width, everything. And what I found is these work great when I'm just using them on a, a simple plane, just flying some easy, I mean, even simple 3D, they do perfectly fine. When I put them on a plane that is doing high G aerobatics, violent pop tops and lam shivaks, those kind of things, what I have had happen to me is I will be flying and all of a sudden I'll feel like I have no control of my plane and I land and these splines have completely stripped out on the inside of this and so the arm is just moving around freely on the servo. These have value in good sport flying. They're, they're probably plenty adequate. When it comes to high G maneuvers and stuff, these plastics tend to be a little bit too weak in the spline. Okay, and this is the same thing. So this is just a plastic servo arm that has a carbon fiber arm onto it and then glued together. This is the exact same concept. You only have the retention in the bolt going through the top and so therefore if it starts to slide it will just strip out all of the splines within here and then the servo will lose control. When you start getting into larger scale aircrafts and you start getting into things that are flying uh, a more violent flight or, or larger surfaces, going to metal servo arms is a great way to go. The aluminum servo arms uh, quite a bit stronger, but the other concept or the other part with the aluminum servo arms is you'll see that they have not only the bolt that goes through the top into the servo, but then they've got these lock bolts. And so you can see that the arm itself is split and when it goes down on top of that spline, you lock it down with the first screw and then you lock these as well. When you lock these side screws, what it does is it cinches this around the spline and also cinches it around that top screw. And so it doesn't allow it to work its way out and it keeps it really tight on the spline. You don't get any loose uh, movements, which is what ends up stripping out the spline. I have found that by just doing the screw itself. Every once in a while I'll check stuff and, and this screw will work its way loose. So I always put a little nylock nut on there. So when you look at these two arms, everything about them looks exactly the same. If you turn them on the side, you will find that this one says Futaba, this one says HTC or high tech. What that means is it determines the number of splines that are inside the arm itself. Futabas run 25 splines and high techs have 24 splines. 
So when you're buying arms, it's really important that you know which servos you're using so that you order the correct number of splines. I believe JR and uh, Spectrum are different. They have 23 splines, I believe. Some of the other arms that you can use, uh, this is an arm that comes with the Savox 2290. It's an aluminum arm. You can see here it's got retention bolts on each side, cinches down around the spline. This arm can be cut so that you can have a half arm and it's got plenty of holes through here that can be drilled out and tapped for a three millimeter or a 440 screw to, to go in for your ball. These heavy duty aluminum arms, you can see that they've got a retention bolt that goes through. A lot of them come with just a single flat screw that comes in. Again, I add the, the lock nut on them. If you look at these arms, you can see this one says H, M3, this one says F, M3. So you've got a high tech arm, 24 splines, and the holes here are three millimeter. Uh, this one is Futaba, 25 splines, and the holes here are three millimeter. If you have to, you can always go in and tap them out for 440 if you need to use a 440 screw, or you can order them appropriately. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you like what you saw, please hit like or subscribe down below. Uh, you can always join us for more tutorials on rc-air.com and the Club Connect system. Thanks for your time.